Good evening, friends. Just a brief word about tonight's service. I would ask you to um, get ready, and that would be to um, get a pen and a piece of paper, or a pencil and a piece of paper, and prepare to write what might be a love letter to God, what might be a word of confession or a plea, a plea for the world to God. Likewise, if you'd like to get a um, like a used candle where you'd have a tiny bit of ash on the wick that has already been burnt, if you'd like to get um, a tiny bit of ash from your fireplace or your wood-burning stove, even a light pen, something to place a visible mark that we might remind ourselves that we are marked as Christian people, prepared for the Lenten journey. You also might want to uh, get a little bowl of water. You might remember that when we impose ashes upon foreheads or um, the back of hands, sometimes we say, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And sometimes we say, remember your baptism and be thankful. However it is that you are prepared to mark all of who you are, prepare yourselves for this time of worship tonight. Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten God Confess to the Lord your God, for God is merciful. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten God alone fills us. Repent to the Lord your God, for God is slow to anger. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. God alone fills us. Praise the Lord your God, for God abounds in steadfast love. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten, God alone fills us. Worship the Lord your God. Together, let us worship God. Grace and peace to you this night, whenever you are watching. It is good to be together on this Ash Wednesday as we prepare ourselves to wander very intentionally in the wilderness uh, throughout these weeks as we prepare for Holy Week, prepare for all that God wants to do for us. I am so grateful to take the journey with you. Some of us have uh, feasted before we fast. Some of us have prepared spiritually. Some of us have been practicing silence. But all of us are here, right here and right now. And so I welcome you for this time of worship when we really do return to God. Return to God and let us celebrate God's presence in our lives. Will you join me 
in a word of prayer and pray with me as the words appear on your screen tonight. Gracious God, in many ways it feels like we've been fasting all year. In many ways we already feel prepared for this season. Some of us have eaten our fill of pancakes. Some of us have engaged in both the joy and the inner darkness of the human spirit. These holy days of masquerading bring out the possibility of telling you the secrets that are buried deep within us. As we enter the wilderness season of Lent, we long to hear your voice, and so we will seek the silence where your voice can be heard. We will find you in others. We long for your peace, so we will wander intentionally toward the new life of resurrection. God of compassion, help us to let go of everything that stands in the way of your presence through the gift of laughter and friendship of love made flesh, we understand that in the end, we are forgiven, that nothing should trouble and nothing should frighten, that you alone fill us, change us and transform us throughout these 40 days. Amen. A reading from Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 18. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom a day of clouds and thick darkness, like darkness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. There like has never been from of old, nor will there be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. These are inspired words for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed. Stay our daily bread 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory In the Gospel reading for this Ash Wednesday from Matthew 6, verses 1 through 21. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father, who is in secret, and your father, who sees in secret, will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Inspired words for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, as we do, the early Christian church observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's death and resurrection, so much so that it became the custom of the church that before that life-giving gift of the Easter celebration, there would be a season of preparation for 40 days, a season of spiritual preparation, a season, it's that important, we get ready. Like training for a marathon, we stretch and we build up our spiritual discipline. We eat right and well. We build up our tolerance of the silence if we can. 
find silence in our lives. Our prayer life in its many forms. Our study of the music and the scriptures and the art and the poetry and the caring for the body of Christ as the temple of the Holy Spirit that is our own body. And so it is that we gather in the early church during this season and throughout these 40 days. It was also a time where those who uh, were new Christians prepared for their baptism. They trained and prepped and prepared and stretched, steeped in the promises of faith that was before them. And for some, it was also a time when persons who had committed grave sins and uh, separated themselves from the community of faith and in that separated themselves from God. In this season, those people were reconciled through confession and soul bearing and forgiveness. They were reconciled and restored into the life of the community, participation in the life of the church, and of course, to an intimate relationship with Jesus. Through all this activity and work and preparing, the whole congregation was reminded about the importance of remembering the mercy and the forgiveness of God, proclaiming that in the gospel, in the life of the church, and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and discovery and confession, by truth-telling, by fasting and prayer, by reducing our preoccupation with ourselves and cultivate uh, an attitude towards others always, by reading the scriptures and meditating on the texts, on God's holy word, and the church will be with you in small group and study. We cannot impose the ashes upon you tonight, but you can find a way to mark yourself, a visible mark, where you can see it. Remember who you are and whose you are. Remember where you come from and remember what we are preparing for. With the one who gave us life and the one who brings new life. The new life that we prepare for. We're going to enter into a time of silence and music, and I'm going to ask you to write, bear your soul to God. And as the music ends, uh, those who are meeting inside the church are going to journey out to the fire pit, where we will close in a sung benediction. If you can't be with us tonight in person, then you're not. I would ask that you take a moment. You can tear your paper. You can go outside and put it in your fire pit. Drive over tomorrow. Stick it in the fire pit outside. Some way, some act, some symbolic act where you give that prayer, that soul-bearing written word to God and be blessed on Ash Wednesday and always. 
as we journey this season through the wilderness together.
Oh.